Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. Next week is World Space Week, so I took some inspiration from that for this week's activity as I show you how to visualise gravity in space. Let's check it out. Sir Isaac Newton's theory of gravity described it as a force that acts between two objects pulling them together. Technically anything which has a mass has a gravitational pull, but we don't feel these from small things which is why you don't feel the gravitational pull from the person sitting next to you or even from bigger objects such as cars and buildings. We only feel really big gravitational pulls from things such as the earth. Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity combined space and time into one fabric of the universe called space-time and it described gravity slightly differently. In general relativity, Einstein described gravity as a curvature of space-time caused by a mass, so something with a large mass such as the Earth creates a big curvature in space-time, whereas something with a small mass such as our bodies has hardly any effect at all. Although we are speaking on a cosmic scale about things having an effect on space-time and curvature and gravity, and this might all seem like something that you can't explore at home, but I'm going to show you a really simple activity today which demonstrates gravity as described by the theory of general relativity and hopefully brings you a bit more understanding about what is going on out there in the universe. To do this I'm going to stretch a lacquer sheet over an open empty box. I'm going to pin the sheet at two corners then pull it nice and tight and pin it at the other two corners and then stretch down one side and pin it onto the table. This is going to create a nice flat surface of lacquer for me to do my experiment on. Now that I've got it nice and flat without any wrinkles, I'm going to place a small marble on the fabric and observe what happens, which is nothing, the marble just sits there. When I try and roll this marble from one side to the other, it very easily rolls in a straight line from one side to the other. When I put a slightly larger marble on the fabric, you'll notice it starts to get a very slight dip. Again, when I try and roll this marble from one side to the other though, it moves quite smoothly from one side to the other. When I add on my third size of marble, which is bigger again, you'll notice even more of a dip in the fabric. But again, when I try and roll this from one side to the other, it rolls quite easily but you'll notice that dip in the fabric as it is moving. Now that I've tested the three different types of marbles, I'm going to put an apple in the middle of this sheet. You'll notice the apple makes a very big dip in the fabric. Now when I try and roll my small marble from one side to the other, you'll notice that it follows a curved path and gets drawn in towards that apple. As I move slightly further away from the apple, it becomes easier to roll it in a straight line to get it to the other side, but as it starts to lose momentum, it does drop down and rest in next to the apple. What is happening in this activity is exactly what was described by Einstein's theory of general relativity. The apple has the biggest mass, so it is creating a bigger dip in the fabric of space-time, creating this gravity well. When I try and roll the marble from one side to the other, if it gets too close to the apple, it gets caught up in that gravity and it gets pulled towards it. That is how the planets are orbiting the sun. The sun is the largest thing in our solar system, so it is creating the largest gravity well. The planets also have their own pull of gravity, which is how they are able to not get sucked into the sun, but it does mean as they are moving through space-time, they are following a curved path around the sun because of that gravity well the sun has created. Now, although I said we feel the gravity of bigger objects such as the Earth, we are actually able to overcome Earth gravity. That's how you're able to walk. Every time you're lifting your foot, you're lifting against that pull of gravity from the Earth, and when you jump, you're jumping away from that gravity pull of the Earth, but you're pulled back down to Earth, obviously, and land again. But we are actually able to escape Earth's gravity completely. That's how we're able to send rockets out into space, as well as light and radio waves. However, there are things in the universe with a mass so great that nothing, not even light, can escape from them, and we call these black holes. Anything that gets too close will disappear over the event horizon and get sucked into the black hole, never to be seen again. 
This is a trickier one to demonstrate at home, however by placing a melon in the middle of my lacquer sheet, I noticed it pulled it all the way down to the bottom of the tub. This means that no matter where I put a marble on this lacquer sheet and try and roll it, it immediately goes straight down to that melon. And this is what happens with a black hole. The entire area contained within this tub is the event horizon. And as long as my marble stays outside the tub, it won't get to the melon. But as soon as I put it anywhere on the edge of that tub, it gets pulled right down into that large gravity well. And that is what is seen with black holes. Now, if black holes can't be seen, how do scientists actually know that they are there? Well, in the not too distant past, scientists actually managed to get a photograph of a black hole, more specifically, the light around the black hole which is disappearing into it at the event horizon. However, before they even got that photograph, scientists were aware that black holes were there, either by looking at the orbit of stars which seemed to be moving around nothing in space, or by looking at the bending of light around black holes. Because of that gravity, any light trying to pass by it would bend round the side of it. This is a really simple demonstration that you can do at home and hopefully you found it effective in explaining how gravity works in space with gravity wells and objects being pulled in towards objects of a larger gravitational pull because they are of a bigger mass. As I said, the bigger the object, the greater that gravitational pull is going to be. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demo and explanation videos I do here to my 10 things you should know about series and here to my series on 100 scientists who influence the world. This has been STEM with Mr. N, Visualising Gravity.